Hello, and welcome to Artful Insight. My name is Susan Schifrin. I'm the director of Arts Philadelphia. And together, you and I are going to spend about 30 to 40 minutes looking at a few pieces of art together. This video is produced in partnership between Dementia Society of America and Arts Philadelphia. Each month, we offer a program online, a live program with a small group of people joining together to talk about works of art from museums and cultural centers across the country, a different museum or center each month. And then in addition to that live program, we then produce a video like this. We will be looking at the same works of art that we did in the live group, but with the video, first of all, it's 30 to 40 minutes in length. You can watch it any time of day or night that suits you. And it's an opportunity to have a more intimate, a more um, self-driven conversation about these works of art. I will ask a few questions to get us started, give you a few things to think about. I will share with you some of the observations and thoughts that folks from the live program might have brought up that I think might be interesting for you to consider. But really, this video each month is about you. It's about what you see in these works of art, how you respond to them, and just having the opportunity to look at them and think about them at your own pace. If you're watching this video with someone, then by all means, feel free to pause the video from time to time if you'd like, so that you can have your own conversation. If you're watching on your own, then I'm delighted and it'll be a conversation between the two of us. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the museum or cultural center that we will be visiting this month. Welcome to Artful Insights. Once again, welcome to Artful Insights. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today, we will be visiting the Norman Rockwell Museum in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. And before we get to the main event for this video, which is to look at some art together, um, I'd like to just share with you a few details about the Rockwell Museum so you have a sense of, of where we're going together. Here we are at the front entrance to the Norman Rockwell Museum. It is located in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. The Norman Rockwell Museum, of course, is a monument to the artist Norman Rockwell, whose dates were 1894 to 1978. And the Rockwell family, uh, Rockwell and uh, Norman Rockwell and Molly in particular, were influential in um, the creation of this museum. Not this particular site, which as we'll learn, is the second site of the museum. But in any event, um, it's located on about 36 acres of park-like land. And um, so let's learn a little bit about um, the mission of the museum and a little bit of history. The mission of the museum is to illuminate the power of American illustration art to reflect and shape society and to advance the enduring values of kindness, respect, and social equity portrayed by Norman Rockwell in his art. In terms of the history of the museum, um, it was founded in 1969, the Rockwell Museum is known for the fact that it holds the world's largest collection of the art, 
and archival materials relating to the life and work of the artist Norman Rockwell. Perhaps less well known is the fact that the Rockwell Museum has over the years begun to collect and preserve and exhibit the work of other American illustrators. This is the second site of the museum. Let's take a look at, at the first site. And so here we see a picture of the original Norman Rockwell Museum. As I, as I mentioned, the museum itself was founded in 1969. And um, this first location was at the old corner house on Stockbridge's Main Street. Um, it was there for 24 years and moved to its current site, which overlooks the Housatonic River Valley, in 1993. So, um, with that all having been said, we now know a little bit about the mission of the museum. We know a little bit about its history. Now it's time to look at some of the art that is inside the museum. So here we are looking at a work by Norman Rockwell. And I want to invite you to take a few minutes to just look, see what you see. Where does your eye go first? Is it drawn to something in the painting? Is it drawn to something about the story that is enacted in this illustration? So now that you've had a few minutes to cast your eyes over this illustration, let's talk a little bit about the content of the image. I mean, we could start with anything in this image. We could start by talking about the colors. We could start by talking about where this might be located. Instead, what I'd like us to think about, first of all, is some of the elements that make up this illustration. We can ask who is depicted here. We might ask where are they depicted. We might ask what do we hear as we look at this illustration? I know that's a kind of strange question to ask about a piece of visual art, but we'll get to that. We could ask about what we do see in this work as much as what we don't see. So why don't we start with who? One question is, what figures do we see who populate this image? We see uh, an older, perhaps gentleman, a younger little girl, little boy, and a dog. Well, we could ask ourselves, Let's, let's take a look at how these figures are dressed. What do we notice about what they're wearing and what 
maybe does that tell us about them? So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that we can take a look at the details that we see here. So we see the figure of a man. Maybe we see a little bit of a beard here. His hair is gray. And next to him, we see someone dressed in what looks like a sailor's outfit. We see the, the color navy in the clothing that both of them are wearing. They both have a cap. One, the, the older figure, the older gentleman, seems to be wearing his cap. The little one seems to be holding his cap or her cap, I guess we could say. What do those articles of clothing make you think of? Do they bring back memories of something perhaps that you wore when you were young? Or do they tell you something about the occupation? of the older gentleman. What do we see in terms of the gestures of the figures? So we're still on this question, who are we looking at? One of our participants in the live conversation we had about this painting said, um, the older man is leaning over like he wants to share. What do you think of that idea? That he's leaning towards the little child because he wants to share the experience with him or her. Another one of our group members described the older gentleman as having a cane and a gray beard. He reminds me of an old salty sailor. It's something that's in his blood and in his soul. So, is this perhaps someone who used to sail for a living? Perhaps he was a fisherman. Perhaps he was just someone who sailed. If that's the case, maybe we have a sense of history that is embodied in what he's wearing. One of our... Uh, group participants when we had the live conversation about this painting said that she thought that this was a sailor with his son or maybe grandson looking out onto the ocean that has a sailboat on it. And let me just, so that we get a sense of what perhaps they might be looking at, there's the boat, there's the sailboat. Okay. But to return to the two figures, do we have a sense of what they're looking at? Do you think they're talking with each other or just standing and looking out? And what's the dog doing? How would you describe the dog? Does the dog seem to be looking at the same things that the older sailor and the younger child are looking at? What do you think? I talked a little bit earlier about kind of strange idea, I guess, but the idea that we might, when we're looking at this painting, we might imagine ourselves hearing sounds. What kinds of sounds would you expect to hear? If you were standing where these three figures are, what would you be hearing? Do you hear lapping water? Do you perhaps hear wind? Are there church bells that are perhaps pealing? And what about this? 
Do you see? Oops, let's move up a little bit further. Do you see these seagulls in the sky? Imagine the sounds they're making. So as you're imagining the sounds you might be hearing, let me ask you one more thing. Is this a peaceful scene for you? Do you feel peaceful in looking at it? Or as you're thinking about the things that you might be hearing, is it too noisy to be peaceful? What do you think? I'm going to suggest that we pause here so that you can think about some of the things we've talked about already. Take a few minutes now, now that we've started looking, take a few minutes to either talk with whoever is watching the video with you or, or just, you know, talk with yourself about what you think you would hear standing here, what you think you might be looking at if you were standing in their shoes. And after a few minutes, we'll come back and we'll talk a little more about that and then we'll move on. Imagine if you were standing in their shoes, if you were present in this scene. What would the weather feel like? Would the air be cool or warm? What would you smell? Paintings like this are purely visual art, but they can awaken all of our senses to say nothing of the memories they can awaken in us. So have you ever been sailing? Have you ever been in a place like this? Have you been someplace where you can remember the sound of the gulls flying overhead? The sound of, what do you think this is? Do you think this is a lake, an ocean? maybe something in between. Depending on your answer to that, what would the sound of the water be like? So with all of those sensory cues, what are you thinking of? What are you remembering? Just think about that for a moment. So now we're getting into a conversation about where we might be. And I wanna share with you a little bit of what the participants in our, in our live conversation said about this location. One of them said, this is a village community right on the seaside, looking out on the ocean. It's magnificent. And yet another person said, the water looks calm and we're elevated and we have a wonderful view of an expansive place. I love it. Do you love this? Do you find yourself drawn to this place wherever it is? And if you do find yourself drawn, what do you think is drawing you? Is it the figures, the who of the painting? Is it the location, the where? Is it your memories that this painting is evoking. 
Now, all of these things that we've been noticing are just a part of what's in this painting. You may have, for instance, when I asked, when we first started, and I asked, where does your eye go first? You may have completely bypassed these figures and your eye may have gone to the horizon where this ship is. Or you may have gone to these seagulls and one of the seagulls is actually pointing straight down to this vertical line here. And I wonder what that is. Well, look, it's the unfurled um, sail on the mast of another sailing ship. So in some ways, these two figures are positioned between one ship here, one ship here. So, you know, we've been focusing in our conversation on how the figures relate to each other, but you could easily, oh, look at this, I just found another. I'm sure you already saw it long since but there is another mast. So there's a, 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 the mast of a sailing ship here, the mast of a sailboat here, and a ship already in full sail. So you might easily have decided when you first looked at this, that this is a painting about sailing. I mean, after all, all of these masts are here. They could be waiting for us to clamber down and unfurl the sail and take the boat out, right? Or you could have, your eye could have gone right to these, this cluster of little flowers. The fact is we all see things differently. And a painting like this is a wonderful opportunity to see all of the different things that we can see and feel and hear and smell. With all of those things that we've seen, what haven't we seen? Now, that could be a very cryptic question, and I don't mean it to be. But, you know, so we haven't talked at all about the sky. And that might be something that you want to investigate further. You know, you can zoom in yourself and see, are these storm clouds? You know, is this a low stratus? cloud going across the horizon? Are we going to have a storm or is it sunny? So you could investigate the sky further. Where's the sun? Do we see shadows? We have one frequent participant in our conversations, which I hope you will join online um, sometime soon. He loves to, to figure out where is the sun and where are the shadows that it's casting and how does that affect how we see the painting? So that's a whole other set of questions you might ask yourself. But before we wrap up our conversation about this painting, I just want to say that one more time, as we zoom in on these three figures, the dog, the child, and the old, older gentleman, what don't we see? We see all sorts of details of clothing, gestures, hands, but what don't we see? We don't see their faces and we don't see their eyes. Why do you think Rockwell would have painted them this way? What can you think of? I mean, 
obviously we're never going to know, but we can speculate that, you know, we have free reign to speculate. And that's part of the fun, using our imaginations, you know, as we imagine a story unfolding from this painting. What has the artist achieved by our not seeing their faces? So as you're thinking about that, I'm going to share with you that when we talked about this kind of perplexing question in our online live conversation about the painting, one of our participants, Robin, said, well, because we can't see their faces, because their backs are turned to us, we have to imagine ourselves looking out like they're looking out. That's a really wonderful notion, isn't it? They're standing as they are with their backs to us because in a way that helps us to share their experience. I hope you have enjoyed our time spent with this painting. Um, there's so much more that we could talk about. And I really do encourage you to spend more time with this painting. Um, if you already know the work of Norman Rockwell, you know that he's an extraordinary storyteller. And stories about daily life, stories about the little things the little experiences that make up all of our lives. One of the things that we like to do when we're having a group conversation is to imagine after we've talked about everything, what if, if we could title this painting, what title would we give it? What do you think? With everything that we've talked about, and please feel free to rewind the video to look back at some of the things that we've talked about and think about some of the things you observed and maybe talked about with somebody else while you were watching. What title would you give it? Norman Rockwell gave it the title Outward Bound. Actually, the full title is The Stay at Homes, parentheses, outward bound. Stay, S-T-A-Y, at homes. The painting is oil on canvas, painted in 1927. It was one of the works that he created as um, an illustration for the Ladies Home Journal. Um, and it was the October 1927 issue. So that's all for today. Um, and um, I'll be back in a second to wrap up. Well, I hope you enjoyed spending time today uh, looking with me at one of the incredible illustrations from the collection of Norman Rockwell's art at the Norman Rockwell Museum. Once again, I want to thank our colleagues at the Norman Rockwell Museum so much for opening their virtual doors to us and working with us to make this video possible. I also want to thank you for spending the time with me to look at one of these wonderful pieces. And I want to invite you, I hope that you've enjoyed the time we spent together. And I hope you've seen that it's really not terribly intimidating. It doesn't have to be to look at a work of art and just let your eyes carry you, let your imagination carry you into unraveling the story that that visual work of art tells. I hope it will encourage you to look at more works of art. 
And I certainly hope that you've had a good enough time that you will join us for another Artful Insights video and even more that you'll um, maybe take a chance with one of our online conversations that take place on a monthly basis. Once again, I'm Susan Schifrin, the Director of Arts Philadelphia, and on behalf of Arts Philadelphia, the Norman Rockwell Museum, and Dementia Society of America, thank you so much for joining me for Artful Insights. Thank you.